Hello guys, and welcome back to the second, third, third part, third part of the tutorial series for modding the base game through mods. Now, there is a little bit of a change that I'm going to do to the schedule. I'm actually going to record just the models and editing the model file. To start with, there's a lot to actually cover with that, and I overestimated or underestimated how much work that will actually be to cover. And the next part will be for the block state and then testing the final result. We're going to work on just the models today and then we'll do the block states and the testing next in the next part. And that will be hopefully the final part for this particular series. I did organize a few of our things. I have just a files folder here for the for some things that we're going to be doing today. And then there's also the Minecraft and then there's different folders based on those directories that we made in the previous parts. So, and then I have the jar right here. We have a new model as well. So I created a new model just because when we do get to the block states, it will be a little bit easier to see the changes with something a little bit different than we created before. It's the same thing that we did with the other model though. We made sure to set the properties or the, the variable to all. So it's a little bit easier for us to work on. So we're going to actually open up the leaves, that model that we just created, and we're going to open it with Notepad, and we can see some changes that have been made with the program. So we have our main bracket for the JSON file. Now this is important, you need that main bracket to actually function properly. And then we have our elements. As you can see, there is two elements here. There's this one and that one. Uh, the element name is cube two and cube one, which is the same thing that we named the elements in the block bench. Uh, we also have the coordinates for each of them for the location of the, the chords of the type of element. So where the, it's located in the grid. And we also have some other settings here where this the sides are defined as such and we also have the coordinates or the I think the scale of it I'm not entirely sure that oh that pardon me that's for the UV map that tells it where the position of the UV map for that texture is and then our texture is located here which is defined as all so all is this part right here this variable where it says we define our textures as the pound sign basically means we're directing the anytime you see a pound sign that basically means we're calling the variable from somewhere else in the document so as seen right here uh, the pound sign is calling all which is also a texture that we have defined as a block slash all so this would be textures block oak leaves so oak leaves is our file name block is the folder that it's in and the texture because we're actually defining the textures it would be in the textures folder with that being said we can actually also use the pound sign to tell it to use other things as well like the particles for example another thing to note is if you observe the document itself there is a very specific format with the commas that are in the document. Now this will probably be the one downside that most people actually have when editing JSON files is not having the proper format for the commas. Uh, a lot of people run into this issue. I've run into this issue. I still do with have occasionally messed up my models from not paying attention to where the commas are. It's just one of those things that, it, that you won't really ever get used to, honestly. It's just one of those small things that need to be fixed once in a while, and that's okay. Uh, I'll explain the best that I can do with how it all works. So we're going to break up the commas into two sections. You have your settings, which are your, for example, these little things right here. These would be your settings, anything that is basically in a group and has other settings parts of that. Now those settings, for example, this one right here, say your main setting, and it's in a group. Now there isn't two brackets on this particular line, so it doesn't need a comma. 
because it's the last thing that is on that's being run from this part of the script so but in a sense it has settings it has the north east south west up and down those have values which are these things here which also require commas each time that you define a new variable you need to end that section with a comma unless it's the last setting that's being used for in in this case this north side the last setting being used is texture and it doesn't require a comma now because the setting this setting north has multiple values because it's under face it does need a comma at the end of this because it's continuing to the next line which is east and east goes to south and then south goes to west and then all the way to the last one which does not require it because it's at the end of the script now for elements same same thing exact same thing uh, it's just we're grouping it under elements and then there's this setting right here this continues to another element so we need to make sure there's a comma there and from there the second element doesn't require one because it's at the end of the script so that's the easiest way I can describe it most likely if you're running into a texture issue or something is acting really funny cover over your settings again look at the file and most likely there's some sort of comma missing or there's an extra comma that's not supposed to be there and that will probably be the cause of your problem. There are some extra things that you can do to make things a little bit better, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Now this is our model, so we're going to have to make some changes to it to adapt it to leaves. So we actually need to see the leaves file. I'm going to go into files, models, and then we're just going to explore the oak leaves first. And I'll explain what's going on here. So we're actually, there's only two settings really into in this particular file. There's parent, which I'll cover in a second, and there's textures. Obviously we know that textures are just defining textures uh, for the actual model. And the variable for the texture is all. Now you can see why we set the variable for our, our model as all as well, because we need it all for that particular mesh. Now, generally I've noticed with the tint index, which we'll go into a little bit. Basically, tint index is biome colors. It works best with all for some reason. I'm not sure why, but just make sure that it has all when you're working with things like leaves and grass and stuff like that. The other setting that we have here is parent. Now, parent basically is like a little line of script that says, okay, call this file that's in this folder and basically we know that it's in the models folder so it's calling models block and then leaves the leaves file so I went through all the files and I ended up getting leaves as well so we'll take a look at leaves now and first off the thing we're actually seeing that it's calling another file as well and the texture is also all so we're calling it's being called from this texture here so this is where it's defining the texture from then what it's doing is it's basically going okay uh, we need to get that texture from the oak leaves file so we're going to get that texture and put it for the particles here so we have particles and we have the all thing already defined so we don't need to worry about those two things here we then have the in, the elements itself in the leaves file. Now, there are a few things that we need to do. The call face, I'm not going to worry about explaining that today, but basically what that does is it helps with performance for in some cases. Uh, sometimes it just looks really weird because if you if you don't do it properly. But what it does is it basically disables the face if it's connected to another block. We're not going to worry about that. We just are interested in the tint index and the location of it. So again, we have down, up, north, west, south, east, west, all those sides. We know that it's in our faces category, so we need to put it in that same location. So we're going to copy this. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy. Actually, we're going to just select all as well uh, with the, the quotations. Make sure that you have everything exactly the same. 
don't copy this little comma right here. We don't need that. And then we're going to go to our models. And then what we're going to do is select all with both quotations. It's probably easier to go from the this side over. And then what we're going to do is go search, replace, and in most cases, your settings will be already set up. And just make sure that all these checkboxes are disabled. You have it under normal for search mode and these settings are exactly the same. And what you want to do is if it's auto filled, then you don't need to worry about filling out the find what. For your find what section, it should be the comma, pound sign, all, or comma. And that's what you want in the find section. After that, what you want to do is paste your replace all with comma, pound sign, all, comma, and then you want to, or quotation, pardon me, when I'm, those other two ones are quotations. And then what you want is the comma between all and tint index, and then you want the comma, the quotations, and exactly the same thing that we got from this file right here. So we want exactly this section this section right here in our replace part right here. So when you have done that, go back to your main model folder, just select the part after the texture where elements start. And you can even select this part right here. And then what you want to do is just hit replace and then it will add the tint index to that part of the file. Now we can get out of that. Now, one thing to note is you want to just go over what was added, make sure that there's no typos. If you did exactly the same thing that I did, you should have your comma where the all sign is still, and there should not be a comma at the end of the tint index. That's really important. So make sure that that's all set up like the way it is. And you might want to just clean up your file a little bit. Uh, you can generally do that with replacing and stuff like that, but I'm not going to worry about it. It doesn't really matter too much about spaces with JSON files. It just really matters about the commas and the brackets mostly. So now that we have the tint index in place, let's go back to our leaf file. And we have one last thing that we need to take a look at. It's calling basically the... So basically the last thing in the leaf file that we need to look at is the parent and then what it's running. So we're tell it's basically saying run block in the models block and then a block.json. So let's take a quick look at the block.json and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so this is with the block.json. This has to do with the display settings. So we know that when basically a block is held, it has certain rotations and stuff like that for when you're actually holding it, there's certain settings for what it looks like in the GUI and that's basically what this file does is the block.json. We're actually going to not copy this bracket right here. We're going to copy the one that says display and we're going to go all the way up to display and then we're going to copy that using control C and then we're going to go over here and then what we're going to do is just after our textures main file the uh, bracket here after the comma we're going to hit enter and then we're going to hit control V to paste that in. Now the one thing that we do need to take in consideration is we just pasted code that did not have a comma. So when you're doing that make sure to add a comma at the end if it's continuing the script. In our case there's still elements that need to be run from. We have a comma here, we have a comma there and this is the exact same script that we need. So that's perfect. We have everything set up. That's all we need to do. Now there is one thing that I want to actually share with you guys before I end the tutorial. So this is the models wiki page on Minecraft Gamepedia. It has a lot of useful information here for what we're doing. There is a few things. It explains block states, all the different settings for block states. There's it gives even most of the information that we'll be covering, but uh, there's only a few things that we need to actually pay attention when we're actually making the changes and the things. We'll be covering X and Z in the tutorial, and there, or was it, pardon me, X and Z for the variants, and there's a few other things that we'll be covering as well with that, but we're mostly focusing on models today, so I'm gonna go down to block models which explains some extra additional settings that we can do. One thing that 
is important if your model is sometimes outside of the actual box zone or if it's connected with certain other textures sometimes it gets a little bit dark with shading and stuff like that this can be fixed with ambient occlusion which is a setting that is a boolean which is either a true or false statement by default it's set to true what it does is it deals with shading like um inner block shading and stuff like that. Sometimes if it, the blocks are connected, there's a bug and it will make it dark for some reason. Setting it to false will fix that issue. So this is how it would basically look if we inserted it into our code. Now, leaves sometimes get this issue. We're actually gonna copy this from the thing, from the actual example, and we're going to go into our leaf file. And then what we're gonna do is gonna put an enter there. We're going to basically go out a couple of things and align our ambient occlusion set to false. Now after you've set the to false, what you want to do is make sure there's a comma after the false and because you're continuing on to the textures and display and then elements. So once you've done that, you're good to go. We'll cover the block states in the next tutorial. Uh, before we finish this up, I'm just going to save that model, which should be right on our project it's right here i'm going to cut this and i'm going to move it into our models lock and i'm going to paste it here and one other thing if you want to set your gui icon for your actual item then you want to paste it in your items as well and this will allow it to show in the items folder as well as the actual block physical display so this cut items or item Models.item covers the GUI display where like the items and stuff like that and then the block models.block basically covers the actual place down block version of the display so you want to have those two in the same folder. Other than that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video and I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching, peace out.